So, I realized that I did not film like a real intro to this video. So here it is. I don't know if I'm gonna do some editing. Stick it in. My name's Desmond and I'm converting this shed into my dream home. And I'm gonna be sharing the process of what it's like to transform a shed into a full-blown house. And most importantly, how to do it on a budget. Anything from budget-friendly DIY projects all the way to timber framing back to finishing, I want to let y'all in on the process of doing it all on your own. I love spray foaming stuff. Um, in fact, I probably spray foam more things than I needed to. Just make sure that it's not too dusty. What I do is just, oh. <laughs> that usually works. So because I don't have any attic space, I have to put blocking between my rafters above my top plate. And what I'm doing here is I'm spray foaming the cracks around that blocking so it is completely air sealed and I don't have to worry about bugs getting into my insulation. I will also eventually go back and paint all of my reused plywood with mold killing primer because I'm very cautious when it comes to mold. If people are curious why I'm spray foaming, every crack in my house is because this guy right here stink bugs this siding is rough sawn poplar board and batten siding board and batten siding is extremely durable and if you take care of it it can last a lifetime and if you find the right supplier it can actually be way more affordable than most other types of siding this poplar is one inch thick and it only cost me a dollar a square foot which is the same as a dollar a board foot Another great thing about board and batten siding is that it's very do-it-yourself friendly. It is very simple to install and you don't need that many tools. Especially if you can find a supplier that cuts the boards in the sizes that you need before you take it home. When I bought this siding, I bought it in bulk, basically per tree. And the boards came anywhere from 6 inches wide all the way up to 22 inches wide but most of them were either eight inches wide or 12 inches wide. But I'm honestly just happy to have an excuse to buy a table saw because I love using table saws. I don't know why, but I do plan on using this table saw in the future for building custom kitchen cabinets and just cabinetry in general. If anybody ever tells you that they truly enjoy sanding, they're either A, lying, or B, need help. One eternity later. So this is kind of what my trim looks like. It's not finished yet, but what I've been doing is I actually sand like the edges, like I round the edges around all the trim. I don't know why, but I think it makes it look like a thousand times better. So when it's time to do trim around your windows, there's many different styles that you can choose from. Here's a picture to show you an example of what I mean. Choosing a style for your exterior trim can really change the appearance of your house. I chose the eye in this case. So I kept attempting to straighten out this piece of trim with my knee, but it was not working. It was just too warped. Well, this piece of trim is warped, as you can see. And I was sitting here thinking about how to do fix this, and this is what I came up with, so we'll see how well this works. Okay. Okay. So the reason you see these pine colored screw holes is because I am screwing on my siding for the most part. And that is because in the past I've had a huge problem with warping and bowing because I decided to rush and put up my siding before I put any type of finish on it or sealant on it. 
And I do have to say that if you are doing board and batten siding, please seal it before you put it on your house. Because if you don't, there is a huge risk of it bowing or warping on your house. Now that my siding is sealed, it probably won't have a problem with warping down the line, but I'm screwing it down just in case because I really don't want to deal with gaps or any type of warping in the future, so it's just an extra precautionary measure. Bruh. Some of you may notice that these boards aren't the same color as the rest of my house, and that is because this is pine. The rest of my house is poplar, because the supplier that I was buying this from actually ran out of poplar, and I didn't know when he was going to get more, so I just went ahead and bought pine. So the widths that I've chosen for my battens and my trim are 2 inches wide for the battens and 6 inches wide for the trim. I'd really advise not going any thinner on your battens. I think two inches is a great size and any thinner and you might run the risk of having leaks. Some of you may be wondering why there's these random boards nailed in front of my window. And that's because my window is not fully installed yet. It is just tacked in. I do this a lot with my windows when I'm not ready to install them yet for whatever reason just for security purposes so it's not easy for people to just walk in and out of my house because I do keep my power tools in there. I also plan on making a full tutorial video on how to install board and batten siding that goes more in depth. And I plan on using that window as a part of that tutorial to show you how I install my windows with board and batten siding. These loft walls are a little bit more difficult to do siding on. And that is because I'm working with two angles. Those angles are 49 degrees and 19 degrees, which sets my roof pitch at 1412 on the steep side and around a three, three and a half, 12 on the loft. The reason for the odd angle in the loft is because I wanted to be able to stand up and not hit my head wherever I was in the loft, but I didn't want my roof to be too flat because where I live does get decent snow. The way I accomplish this is I frame my loft walls at 6 feet 3 inches tall. That does account for the thickness of my floors and my ceiling. So when it's all said and done, I'll have about 6 feet 1.5 inches of headspace in the loft, which is just enough for me to comfortably walk around without worrying about hitting my head. And at the tallest point in my loft, the ceiling is about 8 feet and 3 inches tall, give or take. So Menards did not have the like corner L trim that goes against the dormers. So what I've done is I found the closest thing to that shape in the store, which is this thing minus this bend. It's been outside for a while. Um, and I'm just painting the corner that will be exposed black just to where it's good enough. The product that I've chosen to seal my board and batten siding is Thompson Water Seal. It is by far the most affordable type of finish that I could find compared to any type of polyurethane or stain. You can see I just dump it right on there and we'll see how it holds up. So far it's been doing pretty good and it's prevented any kind of warping. So 
worked a little bit until the night. Really wanted to get that last loft wall done because I'm trying to move in really soon and I want to insulate the loft. So I needed that wall done. So it's waterproof. Tomorrow. So I finished my gable trim today. If y'all can see that triangle piece of like trim accent, I don't know what to call it. Um, that is to hide the fact that my gable trim pieces were supposed to be eight feet, three inches, but I just got them cut to eight inches. So they were a little short. So I used that piece to cover up where they were too short. I'm really curious what y'all think. So comment if you think it looks better with the trim or without it. So today it's like randomly 70 degrees, which is like super odd, but perfect for me because I really wanted to finish getting all the screws down on the roof because I still haven't done that. I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, I can get the rest of the screws done on the roof. Yesterday I didn't film, but I like got the last piece of gable trim i think that's what it's called um up yesterday so all the pieces are there they just need to be screwed down like more than they are i just kind of tacked them up and then got down because it was raining yesterday and i didn't want to like slip and fall but i got my old rock climbing rope so i'm literally just gonna throw like a tether like across my roof and then just loop it through my belt and hope that that suffices for any of my rock climbing viewers out there, I know I don't have enough tail on this, but something's better than nothing. Yesterday it was deer, now it's turkey. I wish my camera could pick it up. I don't know if y'all can see him moving around in there. There's like, there's so many, there's so many turkey over there. That one's like digging or something. But anyways, this is the sketchiness that I'm working with. Goes to the tree. We'll see. So I decided not to film that much this day because A, I wanted to get this done and B, it's honestly pretty sketchy, not the safest thing. So I wanted to stay focused, make sure that I was staying safe. And the last thing I need is for my phone to slide off my roof and break, so. Y'all, I Bruh. am so happy, finally. To answer any questions, yes, this is what I have been putting my ladder on. And no, nothing about this was safe and nothing about this was smart. So if your ladder doesn't reach, I would advise that you buy a longer ladder. For me, I was not about to do that, but I was also accepting the fact that this may, well, actually kill me. So keep that in mind. I do not ever, well, I hopefully not, ever have to use a ladder on this side of my house ever again. I'm so done. Y'all can see my tether and my freaking, oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy, guys. Thank y'all so much. For watching i i think i'm at like 46 subscribers now which is like amazing i am so grateful and i thank every one of you that subscribed to me for subscribing because it really means a lot and if you haven't subscribed already don't hesitate to subscribe because i am going to be making more content and um i plan on doing all different types of things like house building but i also plan on doing like off the grid stuff and like i plan on getting like chickens and all that kind of stuff so if in the future so plenty of content thank you all so much for watching 
it like i said it really means a lot to me and have a blessed day mm -hmm.